Welcome everyone to Insecurity number eight. In this week's episode, we want to talk about Google Glass and privacy. Now this episode stemmed from a former student of mine decided to do some ask me specifically some questions about privacy and I decided why don't we pose it to the insecurity group. With Tom and I both having um, Google Glass, we thought it would be a good idea. As you can hear, I'm joined by our favorite security researcher, Tom Webster. So say hi, Tom. Howdy. And we're just going to, that we have seven questions and we're just going to read them and then we're going to just discuss them. So the first question I have is, the biggest concern regarding the Google Glass is the privacy concern. Since you have the Glass, are there any noticeable privacy issues which concern you? Um, for me, honestly, no. Um, there is a knee-jerk reaction of, wow, I'm going to be wearing a camera on my face everywhere, but it it's really, you're not going to be turned into a super spy while wearing Google Glass. To take a picture of someone, you know, you've got to give them a depth stare. Um, when trying to take notes today, we were, we, my company had a conference, and I was sitting there trying to take notes and grabbing slides off the whiteboard with glass, and it was really noticeable to people in the room that I had to, like, depth stare the whiteboard and click glass to take a picture. Um, so now there's a knee-jerk reaction, but I don't think there's any huge privacy concern that you wouldn't get with you know carrying a camera on you in the form of a cell phone. I mean, when I record a video, the people that I'm recording say, "Hey, I see the the light in in your Google Glass." They don't know what it shows, but they see a light. That's almost the same thing as the red light that you get with a normal video. The thing is, is if you're in public you have to assume that that people can be recording you with their cell phones or their cameras or anything else there should you're in public it's it's yeah you can come up to me and say what are you doing i'll be more than happy to tell you that i'm not doing anything with google glass but i don't see a real privacy concern that's not there with a hidden video camera or any other just a cell phone around your neck yeah, it's it's really easy to kind of, like, if I'm taking my cell phone and, you know, just kind of waving it around, or even if I've got it in my pocket but exposed just, just a little bit, um, it's really easy to take videos and pictures with this and be really sneaky about it. You know, I could just be talking and snap a couple pictures just like this, no, but no. But with glass, yeah, you've got to really stare someone down to get a good picture or else it's going to be blurry. Um, it's really, really easy to take a picture with your phone. It's kind of sneakily with glass. It's a lot harder because you look like a weirdo. What I've uh, what I've told people who've who've asked me this question is I've handed them glass and I'm going to say uh, the video recording is only going to go for 10 seconds. So what I want you to do is record me for 10 seconds, but I don't want you to look creepy because if you look creepy, I'll know that you're doing something you're not supposed to. And what happens is they end up looking creepy and they go I can't do it and I say well that's how I look so well, what are you expecting yeah exactly you're you're not gonna be a spy with glass in any way when you walk into a room wearing Google Glass everyone knows so I mean there's look it's brand new and what I will say is everyone that has Google Glass paid a lot of money for it they're not gonna just pay there to do these creepy things they're there to have it for a reason so so the goal is, and I think Google's goal was to have this idea that the cool people, not the cool people, but the important people are going to try this. And from there, then we're going to start mass producing it for other people and try and get people eased into the situation. Right. It's more of a social construct than anything else. It's There's nothing really to fear about glass that you, you know, wouldn't already fear with a cell phone. It's honestly the cell phone is going to be the, the more sneaky device and everyone has them. So glass shouldn't really be viewed as anything creepy. And, and the last thing we'll say about this is if you have a problem, talk to the person who has glass and alert them to your concern. More likely than not, they want to have this conversation with you. They don't want to make you feel intimidated or anything else. They're not going to go up to you and say, if you don't like it, leave. They're going to talk to you and try and ease your concerns. That's what We're all glass advocates, if you want to put it in a word. So, so I guess we come to the conclusion, look... It's a privacy concern if you want to make it one, but I don't really see one necessarily specifically there. 
Okay, let's move on. Question two. Why do you think society is so paranoid about Google Glass? The creep factor, I guess, the creep factor when there are devices out there that are also do so many of the same things. So we just said it. So is there a creep factor with Google Glass? Uh, definitely. And it's really because, you know, when you're carrying a cell phone, most of the time it's in your pocket, it's in a holster, it's in a carrying case of some sort, and it's not readily available. You're not walking around with your phone like this, pointed at people all day long. When you're wearing glass, inherently, you know, so you could be filming me right now. You could be filming this conversation if we were, you know, in private and having a private conversation, and if I didn't know what glass did, if I didn't know that light came on, I wouldn't know necessarily. Um, now, you wouldn't get a very good picture because you would be moving around and, you know, looking like a normal person having a conversation, but I think that's what it stems from. It's, it's, it's a camera that's pointed at you, and there's really, you know, no big flashing police siren light or big flashing police light telling you, I am recording right now. I mean, there's you're not walking around with a snap board for you know motion pictures or anything like that. Well, I think wearing Google Glass makes me look obviously different and look funny looking. So people do get weirded out. What is this guy doing? And when people finally get the courage to ask me, they, they say, "Oh, I was afraid to ask. I thought it was a medical device to help you see or something like that." I said, "Well, it's not a medical device. It does help me see, but something else." And I get a lot of kids, little kids, uh, look, that, that's what they do. They stare at people who are different. And so on my end, the stares are creepy in my eyes. And I don't mean to devil's advocate this, <laughs> but I, I, I do get the people staring at me like, what is on his face? He mm -hmm. looks weird. And I, I end up coming back to the idea that, uh, that, look, it is different. It is creepy. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay being the brunt of jokes as long as I can explain to you what it is. And yes, there is, and I'll keep on coming back. Yes, I agree with you. There is a creep factor, but but I think it goes back to we were all scared when cell phones came out. Are you recording me? Then we got scared when camera phones came out. Are you, are you recording me? And then people just learned to deal with it. And, yeah. and I think it just takes some time. We're not going, I mean, with the Galaxy Gear Watch, we're going to have the problem with people videotaping on their phones or on their uh, watches. We're not going to ban that. We can't just ban watches. So I, I keep on saying my job is to advocate for Google Glass to be less creepy. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, not to be that guy, but if I'm talking to you, chances are... I, not not as an insult, but your life isn't interesting enough for me to want to capture every moment of our conversation. Now, if I walk up to Sergey Brin and I shake his hand and I start talking to him, I might want to record that. But if you're just Joe Schmo on the street, if you're working in the post office, I don't necessarily want to record that interaction. It's honestly not that interesting. And Glass doesn't really have the battery power to do that for every person you talk to in a day anyway. Well, let's save that because I'm sure that's a follow-up question later on. <laughs> Okay, number three. There is also a lot of talk about Google being able to aggregate even more information on its users with the glass. What do you think about this? Oh, it's definitely true. Um, I mean, having glass enables you to take more pictures, make more searches more readily, um, to get information about locations around you, just like your phone does. Uh, it's, it's definitely another device that Google can use to collect information about what you're doing, what you're searching for, what you're interested in, and then, you know, with the advent of these translation apps, you know, what are you reading? Okay, that's cool. Well, here's some other stuff like that, or, oh, maybe you're in this strange country. Let me advertise some language software or something else. And it, it is another collection device for Google to use. That said, I don't think it's the most powerful one they have. The, the most powerful collection device they have, you're already carrying it. It's your phone. It's your Gmail account. It's your Google Docs account. It's whatever you put on the Internet. Look, if you want Google to be the great search engine that they are, they're going to need data. I mean, it's just plain and simple. We, we, we haven't talked yet, but Google is an advertising company, and they do that by providing you the best information that they can possibly get. So it's very simple. If you don't trust Google, 
you're not going to trust Google Glass. And if you don't trust Google, then I urge you to get off all Google services because I use Hotmail, use Microsoft, use this, use use anything else. But it goes back to if you're using them and they're offering you a free service, how do you think they're getting that? How are they providing that service to you? So yes, Google is aggregating this. And, and are, what are they doing with it? How about they're trying to make your life better in some way? Let's not look at it. They're trying to find everything about you to blackmail you later. How about they're trying to do the best thing they can do? Right. When when you sign up for a free internet service, when you're using anything on the internet that's free, you have to keep one thing in mind, and it's very simple. You are not the customer. You are the product. When you use Twitter, when you use Facebook, when you use Google, when you use Microsoft products, you know, unless you're directly paying for it, unless you're paying Facebook a monthly subscription, you are not their customer. You are the thing that's giving them personal data that they can sell to advertisers. And not, you know, sell your home address or sell your name, but sell the fact that, hey, there's a guy between 20 and 25 and he likes technology and security. You should show him those ads. That's what they're selling. They're selling your eyeballs to people. And I would say, you know what? I rather a targeted ad, as creepy as it may be, than a non-targeted ad for something I really don't care about. The hit rate will still be very, very low, but there may be a hit rate, whereas a completely untargeted ad for dentures that I don't care about, I'll never click on. Right. So, number four, if you could if you could give a suggestion to Google regarding fixing some of the privacy concerns with Google Glass, what would they be? Oh, this is a difficult one because the first thing everyone goes to is, hey, put a red light on the front of it. But that's that's not a solution. That's really gaudy. I mean, there's some implications to that that it it breaks some of the beauty of the product to be you know, to try to be non-obtrusive. If you look like the Terminator, right? If you look like a Borg and you've got, you know, this red laser shining out of your eye, it it really breaks the experience, not just for you, but more importantly for other people. Uh, one of the great things about Glass that they toted early on was, hey, look, I can finally take pictures of my baby because it doesn't hide from the camera. And I, I, I will attest to that. I will attest to exactly that. And yes, absolutely you can. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, children children will hide from cameras. It's just a thing. Um, but throwing a red light on it kind of it, it would break that, right? It would instead of being you know something very bland, something that you just wear on your head, it would now turn into something that could be potentially scary to a young child or it, the very least distracting to the wider audience that you're trying to capture. Um, so. It's. I've seen some like printed shields where you can cover up the camera. That's an interesting idea, but then again, it removes the spontaneity of having a camera everywhere you go. I'm taking way more pictures now with glass because I don't have to reach into my pocket, dig out my phone, flip to the camera screen, get everything right, and hit go and take the picture. Instead, I look in the general direction, I hit the button on the top, boom, I've taken a picture. By covering up the camera, you remove all that spontaneity. So it's it's really a hard thing, and honestly, I think society's just going to have to deal. People are just going to have to get used to this. This isn't the. I mean, this is far from the first device that's a wearable camera, and it will be far from the last in this form factor. I mean, I was going to say to that. I think advocacy is always the best thing. If you put People follow. People listen to TV commercials. People listen to billboards. Whether they're true or not, they listen to them. And the louder you are, the more likely you're going to be heard. So Google, starting with their glass campus, uh, glass campuses where you can go first Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Then it was Detroit, and they say, "Come try on glass." They have their pop-up winter winter wonderland stores, and I'm not sure if they sell glass there, but they should. They should find a way to put. To, to put these into the hands of regular people and say, hey, come come ask us. They should charge the glass explorers, you and me and everyone else, to say, hey, when people ask you, 
If you're going to wear them out in public, we're asking you to let people talk to you about it, give them the time, show them with screencasts. Basically, be the advocate that we that we're trying to be. And and I think Google needs to put a little more press releases on glass, feed some more mm -hmm. information. Every time I see a news article, it's always negative. I saw one today yeah. on Good Morning America with uh, Cecilia Beatty getting her ticket and I guess fighting, deciding to fight it. It's always negative. They rehash the negative issues and there's no positive articles. There isn't anything, the healthcare industry, there's doctors now doing surgery with this. Why aren't we, why isn't Google using its PR machine to push that? Why aren't we showing the good things we can do? Um, we have, I forgot her name, Chakra, Chakra Kelly going all over the world taking pictures and showing people things. Let's really go on, on a positive advocacy push and I think that's going to change it. Yeah, and it's it's really hard to do that because it's really easy to focus on the negativity. And honestly, I think the big thing that people latch onto is they make all these assumptions. You're just like, oh my god, it's a face computer. Oh my god, it covers an entire eye. You can't see out of your right eye when wearing Google Glass because you've got a giant screen in front of it and you're watching YouTube while barreling down the highway at 90 miles per hour. That's not the case at all. And if if you did a little bit of research or even the best option is to try it on. Everyone I talk to about Glass, everyone that says, hey, is that the Google thing? I say, yes, it is the Google thing, and you should try it out. And then it answers a lot of questions. They figure out, okay, this actually, you have to co sort of look up. It doesn't obstruct your vision. It answers a lot of questions and defeats a lot of you know, wrong assumptions about the product. And I think it's just going to take some time and more often experience to get people used to glass. People need to try it on. If it was at Best Buy and you could just sit there and put it on and it was tethered to the display, that would solve so many issues. I don't know why Google doesn't do that. Okay, we're running out of time, so we're going to have to rapid fire the next couple. Okay. But, uh, let's see. Number five, do you think Google Glass will ever become a widely adopted technology just as smartphones are today? If so, why? And if why not, what, what will it take this to happen? Um, sort of. I don't think Glass in its current form today will become widely adopted. It's really cool. I honestly don't know if Google is going to get the price right initially, which is the thing that's going to hold it back the most if it's too expensive. Um, but wearable computing, wearable computers are here to stay. It's part of the lexicon. We've been predicting this from the days of Blade Runner, from the days of Star Wars. We've been predicting wearable computers. It's going to stay. It is here now. We live in the future. I think you're right. Exactly. It's not in its current iteration. And I tell people, this is not what the final version of Google Glass is going to look like. It may look like this in, for the next year or two, but at some point they have to, they're going to accessorize it. It's going to maybe an add-on to your, your regular glasses. It may be on your left eye. It may be smaller, maybe bigger. We don't know. But it is here to stay. We have the Pebble Watch. We have the Galaxy Gear. We have the rumored iWatch. We have Fitbits, we have Bluetooth monitors. These are all wearable computing. And there's a GoPro camera. If Google Glass was waterproof and, and life-proof, I would have taken on my Tough Mudder. But it wasn't, so I couldn't. But the GoPro did that. And the people wearing it look just as silly as I do wearing glass. So so if you want a life cam of you walking around, it's, it's going to happen at some point. So next question. And we're, we may take some time on this one. Businesses such as bars have already started to ban Google Glass. What do you think about this? Is it okay? Um, honestly, the the tech guy in me says, why? Why would you do this? It cements your place as a Luddite in the world. The other side of me, the realistic side of me says, look, it's their business. They can do whatever they want. Movie theaters don't want you taking in video cameras. They don't want you holding up cell phones in the movie theater to record it. You'll get thrown out. That's their business. They can do what they want, and I think they should be free to do what they want. On the other hand, most places are just putting up these signs because they don't understand it, because they've got these ill-conceived notions about what this does and what it's for. It's not a spy device for the NSA. It's not something Google is using to collect data and grab you know, facial recognition on everyone you've ever known. It's, it's not something that the aliens are going to use to start targeting bars and bombing them. I mean, it, banning Google Glass at your store, and especially those Google Glasses banned here stickers, 
it, it really, to me, it cements your place as someone who's afraid of change, afraid of technology, and someone who really jumps to conclusions without thinking about what you're doing. Oh my god, it's new, it's different, it could be used maybe somehow, some way, in this really weird way that I don't want it to be used. Let's ban it. Wrong answer. So, again, we agree on this. If the place generally doesn't allow cameras, Google Glass should not be allowed in there. When I go to Atlantic City, the people say, are you going to bring your Google Glass? And I go, no, because you're not allowed to bring recording devices onto the poker table. It's, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a social construct. You can't do it. If you're, going to, if you're going to a place where children are not allowed, you can't bring them either. They they ask you to turn in your cell phones. So with that said, I can't bring Google Glass in. And what I have to say to the people at the bars, if you're going to allow everyone to take pictures and you're going to allow the waiter, waiters and waitresses to take pictures there of you and your friends and everything, but you won't let me take pictures the way I see fit, then – that that bothers me because, like you said, it shows that you don't actually know what's going on. You're banning it. To, it's a PR move. That, I mean, that's what it boils mm -hmm. down to. It's a PR move. Now, I have a funny story. My 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 place of employment, my school, doesn't really have a formal policy on Google Glass. They they don't tell me to take it off, but they don't say I can wear it. They basically hope that I am very responsible and I know better because I'm not allowed to take pictures of students, but I know that. And as a professional, it says professional uh, on my, my union card, I... I, I treat people as professionals, and I hope to be treated as one. So we're given one of the state-mandated tests, and someone came up to me and said, where are your Google Glass? And I go, we don't allow video recording devices in here. I don't want to even be thought of as potentially causing a testing irregularity. And the person laughed, and, and we continued on our day. But it, it was it, I, I like to tell the story because it shows, hey, look, this guy knows when it's appropriate and when it's not. And and maybe we can we all know we don't we don't take our phones out and start recording just randomly. We know better. And I'm hoping that businesses are gonna start to see this. I would love a business owner to come up to me and say, Can I try it on? I've had questions and people are nervous, this and that and say, Well no, try it on, you do this. You tell me. So yeah, a couple of the bartenders at the, a local bar I go to occasionally um, walked up to me and said, "Hey, is that the the eye thing that Google put out?" Yes, it's the eye thing. Here, it's the iPhone. It. Yeah. It's the E Y E phone. <laughs> and uh, they they loved it. They were completely enamored with it. They couldn't stop talking about it. It was you know the hit of their night. So I think if people actually try it. You know they'll get over this this kind of initial hatred of brand new technology, and it's it's an age thing. I mean I've seen it more in older people than I do in younger people. Young people think it's really cool. Old people say, well they're just naive. It, there's a big there's some clash there. And to say that I the other thing is somebody tells you to take off the the glass they don't want you recording, and I go back to well they're they're recording you in the store anyway. What's the difference? Well, they're not going to leak it out. Really? They're not going to leak it out? Adobe's not going to leak out your email addresses? <laughs> LinkedIn is not going to leak out your username and passwords? None well, of that I mean, will ever get out. Then. So who are you shopping with? Are you shopping with Michael Jordan? I mean, honestly, who thinks that they are so important? Who is so self-righteous that they automatically assume you are recording them? Well, I, I don't think it's them recording. I, I like I don't think it's them like recording. I think it's just they think uh, they just think that there's a potential. Like I'm just I don't know. I I, I don't know. Are you recording me? No. Unfortunately, I, I hate to say you're not that important. So, <laughs> so last question, and I have lastly after having the Google Glass, would you recommend it to the general public to buy, or is it not worth it? Um, well, we need some clarification on this. Buy at the current developer price, or buy at let's say four hundred. Well, I, I say we do both. Let's start with you got an invite today, and they said it's yours for the low, low price of fifteen hundred dollars. Right. So if my grandmother got an invite tomorrow, and she said, "Should I buy this thing?" No, no, you shouldn't. Uh, it's buggy. It crashes a lot. The battery life is terrible. It does like four or five things really, really well, and then like three other things kind of okay. 
Um, it's not a product that's ready for the general public. It's, I mean, Google Glass, especially the Glass Explorer program, Google's come out and they made this so expensive to say, look, this is not ready. Unless you are a developer or a technophile, you should not be interested in this because it is not a product for sale. This is testing, it is purely testing, and this thing should be handled like uranium. I mean, it, it can break and cause damage at the slightest misuse. Um, Google Glass is not prime time. Definitely not. If you ask me in two years, maybe. But especially at the $1,500 price point, no one except a developer or a technologist should own one of these. Look, I agree with you. People, when I had my three invites, uh, I asked people, people were asking me, can you give it to me? And I said, look, it's $1,500. Do you have $1,500 lying around? And... And they go, well, I said, look, if you already say, it's not a well, maybe, it's this, it, it's a yes, I want to have it. There should be no thought. If you have to think at all, then you are not ready for this. And $1,500 is a lot of money, and they're doing that on purpose. If they made this $300, think how many people are just going to sign up, wear it for a couple weeks, say, uh, it's probably not for me, and you toss it to the side. The $1,500 is a price point that they're hoping that only the real people are interested in. So think about that when you see somebody there. They're, they're not, they paid $1,500 for this thing for, for the ability to wear it. They're not going to do something to jeopardize that. Right. Now, l let me ask you this. Let's take it down to what we're, what we're assuming between four and $700. Um... If, if Google launches this at the price of a smartphone and you are the kind of person that uh, either A, takes a lot of pictures or wants to take a lot of pictures, um, or B, you don't want to be staring at your phone all day, you want the interaction, you want the connectivity, you want to be able to you know talk to your friends, uh, or you have a lot of driving time, especially if you have a lot of driving time. Um, Yes, you should buy one of these. But, you know, either with your smartphone, you shouldn't get one every year. You know, probably every two or three would be fine when the new versions come out. But yeah, I think it would be worth it at that point because at that price point, it does enough that it's worth it. Um, if they fix, you know, some of the issues which they will in the Explorer program, anything beyond the five hundred dollar mark, it's going to be really hard, even for me to, you know, say, uh, okay, is that worth it or not? But I think five hundred dollars is kind of the breaking point on that. I tell people, I unfortunately I may be the wrong use case for this. I don't get that many text messages. I don't get that much email. So the, those two functions, and I don't get that many phone calls. I don't get a lot of communications that way. As soon as they integrate Hangouts into this, as far as messaging back and forth, then absolutely for me this will be a much better thing. But exactly, if you're driving in the car, you have the GPS on looking at it, you get the you get a phone call with a louder microphone, Google please hear us, louder, louder <laughs> headset, um, and and you get the emails and it worked better it pairs well with my phone, but for whatever reason I have horrible service. With better service, the more and better battery life, yeah, at five hundred dollars, this would be good. But that's why it's not five hundred dollars yet, because they haven't figured out how to get there yet. And look, Google, I keep on holding. Google is a company that's not out to profit off hardware. They haven't made anything that's hardware driven, whereas, whereas Apple they do. So they're looking for information. So they're not looking to price it so out of reach that people can't take advantage of it. But they're looking to pay for R and D and. And giving, making this four or five hundred dollars may be the right answer, but we'll see. Yeah, and it's it's def it, so this is not the first time that Google has outpriced themselves with an initial launch of a product. So the ancestor of the Chromecast, the thirty dollar Chromecast, was oh. three hundred, and it was oh. called the Nexus Q. I love and my Q. I I do too, but no one bought it because no one would pay three hundred dollars for a thirty dollar device. So. It, which it was, right? It totally was. It um, was, you're right. But, but I, they needed I love to it. subsidize the development. They needed to subsidize the R&D. Same thing with the Chromebook Pixel right now. It's a $1,600 web browser. That's insane. Who on earth would buy that? But the people that do are funding the next version of the Chromebook, the one that's going to be priced for normal people. Well, those are all the questions we have. So we're going to end this.
Any other questions, send them forward to us. We're two glass explorers. We would love to answer them. Oh, yes. So, anyway, everyone have a good night, and we'll see you next week. See you, everyone.